Contrary to popular belief, I do enjoy RPG games and strategy RPG games. I used to play them all the time when I was younger. Some of my favorite games of all time are games within the RPG genre, such as Grandia 2 or the strategy RPG genre, such as Shining Force 3. It's just that... Well, they're time sinks. It takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of concentration to really get into an RPG or a strategy RPG in 2022 and beyond. And I just have too much stuff going on a lot of the times. But there was an upcoming strategy RPG that I wanted to check out for a couple reasons. The Dio Field Chronicle. Now, there's primarily three reasons why I wanted to check out this game. The first reason being... I have a Square Enix contact and I never really use them and I probably should because maybe I'll get more stuff from them. The second reason was I was kind of hankering for a strategy RPG, it's been a while since I played one. And the third reason being, well it's called the Dio Field Chronicle, I thought maybe Ronnie James Dio would show up in the game. Holy diver, you've been down too long in the midnight sea, oh what's becoming of me, look out! Spoiler alert, Ronnie James Dio does not show up in this game. But what is the Dio Field Chronicle all about? It's coming out on a multitude of platforms. I'm checking out the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Is this a strategy RPG that you should be interested in? Will fans of the genre be interested and casual fans of the genre? That's what we're going to figure out in today's video. So if this is your first time here, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's check out the Dio Field Chronicle and see what this game is all about. So when it comes to RPG games, they usually have a pretty deep story. Strategy RPG games games i always felt were a bit lighter on story at least back when i used to play them back in the day it wasn't necessarily the main focus the main focus of it was the gameplay and maybe that's just something i made up in my mind but there is a story in the deal field chronicle but I don't really know what's going on and that could just be me not paying attention or something like that but I was more interested in the gameplay of this game the story is fine it can be a little bit confusing sometimes because they're adding in new characters lots of terminology everybody talks like they're MVG from Britain but essentially what's going on here is you're a part of a group called the blue foxes there's four main people that are involved with the blue foxes kind of like a renegade group there's a war-torn area that you live in all these people are trying to get this thing called Jade which is like something that they use to research different weapons and research different sorts of hybrid creatures and stuff like that like there's, there's a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of stuff going on i have a, a general gist a general idea of what is going on there's some betrayal characters are dying all this that and the other pretty standard for strategy rpgs pretty standard for rpg games in general but like i said it's just nothing that really grabbed me in. It can definitely grab people. I could see how they would get very invested in the story. But for me personally, it was just kind of like, cool. Let me do the next battle. Let me get to the next gameplay segment. Because that's where I think this game truly shines, is within the gameplay. And I could sit here and try to explain it, but I feel like it's easier to show you kind of two separate instances of how the game evolves as you play it. Because I think that's very important within an RPG or a strategy RPG. It's just sort of constant evolution and the things that you can do to keep the combat fresh throughout. So I'm going to show you something from an earlier portion of the game. I'm going to show you something from a later portion of the game. And then we can kind of see, you know, the growth. There's not going to be any spoilers or anything like that, unless you consider me kicking enemies' asses spoilers. There also is like an overworld sort of segment that you do in between the missions. It usually takes place at a castle. You unlock more areas of the castle in which you could take side missions, do stuff like your weapons. It's, it's pretty stationary though like i said it's just an overworld sort of thing but you can freely explore it but like i said the gameplay the combat of the game that's where a game like this is indeed going to shine so let's take a look at a segment of earlier gameplay and then a bit of later gameplay so you could sort of see the evolution process to see if this is something that you would potentially be interested in all right, so this is one of the earliest missions in the game. You can see I got my squad of four here. We have to defeat Gofferin and capture the base. We have our four characters on the bottom of the screen. Each have a green health bar and a purple sort of, you know, special abilities thing. Your special abilities that you could do within the game constantly drain the, the more you use them and stuff like that. So you either want to find little marks on the map like we have with this blue one here, which is actually for a completely different special meter but they would of course be purple so basically unlike st other strategy rpg games instead of just having to like wait your turn and you know go within the grid where you're on you can actually move freely within this game you can control your whole unit all at once and you know pretty much tell them where you want them to go and stuff like that who you want them to attack so on and so forth you can control them individually however though so let's go ahead and we'll do a special move on this guy here we'll do an assassination and there we go he's now really hurt and he's i mean about to die all right we got him there 
here's one of the, the pickups I was talking about. This will end up refilling our little special meter so that we can do our various attacks within the game. You want to pick up these things on the map because, like I said, they also build up your other special meter. And, of course, the green ones do your health and stuff like that. So it's pretty fun, honestly. I, I like the fact that it's sort of a, a more real-time strategy RPG than just your traditional turn-based strategy RPG because it makes the combat a lot more fluid. It makes the combat a lot more faster and just the things you can do within the combat are pretty cool in my opinion so if you want to make someone you know do something else we can take one of these characters here and just tell them to attack the barricade while the other three characters are taking out this guy that's pretty much how the game works in the early stages of the game it's, it's very easy to pick up and play and get into and you know choose what you want to do choose who you want to attack choose all that sort of stuff so i like that about that but like i said the main thing about this game to me is the progression and how more things open up and how you have the ability to do different things on the levels and you have different types of missions that you come across so let's take a look at something that's a little bit later on within the game now as you're playing the game and you get deeper into it you start to get a lot of different things that you can do such as a skill tree you can do orb research weapon development the skill tree is of course basically just giving you additional special moves that you can do within in combat there are certain parameters in order to unlock them there are the orb research the orb research is basically for your big attacks that you do that other special attack with the blue which i'll show you guys in just a moment and then you have the weapon development the weapon development of course gives you different weapons that you can unlock within the game all of which are done by the different character styles of the game either the warriors the mages the archers or the people on horseback so i think that gives the game a lot of interesting sort of depth into it because there's a lot of different ways that you can play it there's a lot of ways that you can focus on different characters and different styles that you want to play when on the battlefield so i think that that's really cool you know where do you want to put all your focus into it of course there is basic stuff like a weapon shop where you can take a look at different weapons different items that you can equip different accessories that you can equip pretty you know standard stuff for the genre but you know different weapons have different abilities they have different uh, special moves on them as well so mixing and matching is definitely a very good thing within this so as you progress through the game you end up getting more people added into your army but as you can see here there's only four people on the bottom of the screen so how do you differentiate do you just have to swap them out or stuff like that this is where the game I think really shines because let's go ahead to edit unit over here and you can see that we have a whole cast of characters that we can add as sort of secondary characters. What these characters end up doing is basically whatever their special moves are, you can use them alongside of your main character and choose which one you want to use within the battle. You can completely swap them out if you want to build them up and get them some more XP or whatever like that. But you can just use them simply as secondary characters, but you have access to all of their different moves, which I think it's just brilliant like it makes the combat so much more fun so let's go ahead and take a look at it here this is an escort mission where we have to make sure our little carriage over here doesn't get in any trouble we'll come across these bad guys here and so let's take a look at the move so we have our main character and then we have our secondary character and they all like i said have different moves that you can use that are different from your main characters you can give them different weapons and stuff like that too which i think is really cool but i like that about this game i think it, it adds a whole nother layer of strategy just by having these these secondary moves that maybe you just never thought about using but now your characters indeed have them and i think that's that's really cool honestly it's one of the things that has definitely kept the game fresh throughout for me like i said the story of the game it never really sunk in with me like like some other games in the genre have before but the combat and the battle system is just so much fun to me like it, it feels good it feels intuitive it feels fresh which in this genre i mean that's that's saying quite a lot because when was the last time you ever played an rpg and been like oh you know this feels unique this feels fresh now i do want to show you guys the summons attacks because these are just freaking awesome so in that little bottom corner there like i said that's building up another special meter here we have our summon here of bahamut and uh we're just gonna use them because it looks freaking cool oh yeah oh yeah suck it so that's what building up that secondary meter does it essentially allows you to have a summons attack there are different summons that you can equip there are different summons that you also unlock just by playing throughout the game which i think is just awesome like 
everything about this game just feels really good and i think it feels fresh enough and like i said i'm a very casual strategy rpg fan so maybe this is commonplace in these games now but i don't think it is i think this is pretty unique and i think that's why people are going to enjoy this game i think that's why people are going to get into this game because it's different it, it does feel very different um there are some issues that i had with the games you know some of the loading times are pretty long i felt um it's a nintendo i'm playing the nintendo switch version of the game of course so the graphics you know they're not all that great at times you know sometimes they can look a little bit low res it kind of reminds me of like a diablo style as far as the graphics are concerned you could zoom in though and see everything looks pretty fine i haven't had any major issues with the game or anything slight hiccups here and there as far as maybe moving around in that castle section of the game but overall I, I've really been enjoying my time with this game. I obviously haven't finished it because it's a strategy RPG, but I'm about halfway through the game according to uh, Dreamcast Guy based on where I am within the game. And I definitely think if you're a fan of the genre, it's a fun game. You know, maybe it's not the best strategy RPG game ever. The story could have been better in my opinion, but you know, stories are subjective. People are gonna like the story anyways if, if they get into it. It just sort of depends on what you like. But overall, I think the gameplay of this game just really shines it makes the game sort of stand out from the sea oh shoot i hit the wrong area from the sea of different strategy rpgs that we get rpgs are a dime a dozen on the nintendo switch so you got to come with something a little bit different and i think square enix did a really good job with this game so let me know in the comments section down below if this is a game that you plan on picking up is it something that you're interested in is the stuff that i'm hyping in this game is it just commonplace in rpgs now and i'm just an idiot i don't think it is because i feel like people would have been talking about it more but I'm talking about it now, and that's all that matters. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell notification as well. And if this video does good, maybe I'll check out some more strategy RPGs. You guys want the RPG content? RG, R, RPG 85? You want to go full bore? We can go full bore. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.